Bible, just the old-fashioned time that we used to have many years ago, and we're so thankful for it. And I appreciate this extra singing, all the singing, and these specials. When I've gone the last mile away, rest at the close of the day, that's for perhaps just sitting here when they were singing, looking out and seeing the sun as it's setting, the birds all singing low and softly. All's about over now, they're going into rest. Tomorrow morning to rise to a new day, and that's the way it is in life. The worst and day soon passes by, and we lay down upon our couch. I like the top. Uh, gather my garments around me and enter into this chamber, knowing this, like St. Paul said of all, I know him in the power of his resurrection. Amen. And when he calls out from among the dead, I'll be called out with thanks. Thank knowing him in the power of his resurrection, not knowing him by word or by deed, but knowing him in the power of his resurrection. That's one of our our great hopes tonight, and the only hope that we have is in that great resurrection of our Lord Jesus and our uh, preliminary resurrection we have now from death unto life, by having eternal life through Jesus Christ, waiting in glorious waiting with all nature to that day when he shall come the second time from the heavens, who God will stand in due season. And then these mortal bodies that we've grown in now will take on immortality and will be changed and made like unto his own glorious Amen. body, for we shall see him as he is. Thank you. Then sin and sorrow, sin and death of this dark world shall cease in this glorious reign with Jesus of a thousand years of peace. The birds are waiting for that. The trees are waiting for that. All nature is bending and weeping waiting for that time, groaning to be clothed up on. A little girl a while ago asked me a question. She said, Daddy, what did this earth look like when God got through with it? <laughs> I said, it was beautiful, honey. It was beautiful. And uh, I said, someday it will be like that again when the curse is taken off and then we'll, we'll be like it was in the beginning, a great paradise of God. Now. Straight into their work. I was thinking now, the first night, this was the third night of our little revival, and we haven't had a healing campaign. It's just to relax, to just express our feelings and teach the gospel in the old fashioned way. Same gospel that I taught here many, many years ago. Haven't changed one bit. Amen. Yeah. Just the same gospel, not a bit of renewing or polishing up just the same gospel. Out in the services, being interdenominational on the basis of being based in auditoriums and many different denominations of people come together, you kind of hold yourself from doctoring all but divine healing and, of course, accepting of the Lord Jesus. But when you're in your home, like the home church here, you just feel like it's you just take off your collar and just simply hey. preach just what you think is right, and that's it. Hey. And um, many times in here, we have many times people disagree. We can't expect everybody to agree with us on our church uh, doctrines and things that we have, but we may be the same thing as your pastor was preaching, but he would still be my brother, hey. Hey. regardless. And everyone looks at things in different views. And in this week, seeing that I had to cancel out a week in Canada on account of a snowstorm, why well, give me the privilege of get to come here to the tabernacle for a few nights revival, which I promised when I left. And I give it out that there wasn't not a healing service just to preach the gospel. Just and on this finding. I thought maybe it would take a few nights on the seven church ages. Well, I truly believe that we are living in the last church age, the last day, just before the coming of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I always try to weigh myself, little church here, anywhere when speaking, because of the good Lord of heaven has 
give me a little bit of a ministry to, uh, on the supernatural side, of you understand? And people hang on to your word. And, and so I, I have to be very careful what statements I make. Because if the Holy Spirit has granted this power of vision and discerning, which is unquestionable, and they hear you speak, they feel that you have some conception of what you're talking about, or God would never bless an error and send it out like that. Right. So then you have to be very careful and weigh it in the light of the Word all the time. And in that, if I make a mistake, I pray God forgive me, because I don't mean to. And I, and any time in teaching, especially in these deep subjects that we're in now, and it's last night on the mark of the beast, and subjects like that, and tonight of the seal of God, the mark of God, and so forth like that, I feel that maybe I might have had many would can kind of disagree with the, with what I teach on that, but I try to do it just as rep, not directing it to any church, any denomination, or any person. Not at all. God knows that. Just yeah. in the light that I see it in, that's the way I see it. And there's well, not a church that names the name of the Lord Jesus for what I love. That's not a person that could call his name or have any respect for him for what I go to my death to do anything for them. That's right. No matter what brand of religion they're wearing, whether it's Methodist, Baptist, Catholic, whatever it may be, that wouldn't matter an ounce to me. That's right. As long as they got respect to my Lord. But now, there is a blueprint. And now, every church teaches perhaps what their theology is of that church, leaving it its based upon a blueprint. Well, now, many times, that, and seeing those things, that it isn't just the way I read the blueprint. <laughs> so then, I have a right in my own church to lay out what I think is right. Here some time ago, a contractor. I was in Milltown, the Milltown Baptist Church, where it had a revival. Brother Wright, you all, I guess, remember Marion Lee. And he was very upset about something I taught on water baptism. Well, he went home and he was upset about it. He was a contractor. That night he dreamed a dream. The Lord showed him he was building a house, and he was to put a bay window on it. And so instead of putting a bay window on it, he just put a porch, so that'll be all right. But when the owner of the house come up, he said, tear it down to the foundation and start over again. So he had been taught something different from what the Bible taught, so he said, I just might as well tear the foundation down and build it over again. Amen. I went home with him that night. Stayed all night at his house. So then, we, that is true. It's got to be laid in teaching these subjects. I'm not a teacher. But in what I know of it, I like to explain it to others in the fellowship around the Word while the Holy Spirit makes it real to our heart. Amen. And so, we just have a great time doing it. And uh, just kind of resting up our dear pastor here, Brother Neville, the strangers in our gates, the man in earth is our pastor, Brother Neville, a man of God, a true servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't say it because he's sitting here. I say that at his back or anywhere he's been that way since I know him. He was strictly Methodist and I was strictly a Baptist, but we were brothers together. And so we both turned out to be holy rollers. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> All right, is it, brother? <laughs> so we stand in mutual ground. <laughs> well, we're more. We're having a wonderful time in this way. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Just having fellowship one with another while the blood yeah. of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleansing us from all unrighteousness. Amen. So we're having a great time. And we certainly appreciate uh, the strangers in our gates tonight here. Our little revival, I guess you wonder why it wasn't advertised. Well, it was just a little uh, uh, time of jubilee for our church here, and that's the reason we perhaps maybe, I don't know how the Holy Spirit will lead, but 
maybe one night before we close here, we may have a healing service, if the Lord is willing. And um, so I trust that he will grant that. I've got to go back to Canada now to continue in the revivals, and as all know, we got pretty heavy schedule filled right up to the date of time going overseas, and arrangements are already made to begin in Durban, South, and Johannesburg, South Africa, in September about the 3rd. And then we go on from there into Durban, into India, into Palestine, and Luxembourg, and Frankfurt, and Trent, Jordan, and all through there, get back home when the Lord leaves back, <laughs> when he right. tells us to come back. Then there are six another itinerary from New Zealand and Australia and down through there and over into the east of Japan and those countries there. I feel that so many churches around here where people all my just kind of proselyte with one another and then thousands of people never even heard of Jesus the first time. And so I feel that it's my feeling, personally, it's my duty to take the message to them the best that I can. And now, as I let me say again now, all steady present, Methodist, Baptist, Catholic, Presbyterian, Pentecostal, Pilgrim Holiness, Nazarene, sitting around, and that's what we're made. I believe that's where heaven's going to be. I have a whole group of us sitting there. And now all these messages like the mark of the beast, and today, when there is such a confusion, did you understand it last night? If you did, say amen. amen. Now we're going to speak tonight on the mark of God, or the seal of God. Now, we realize, I'm just not trying to preach out of two Bibles, <laughs> one's plenty, but I got one of them here for a purpose of little footnotes and so forth of reference if someone should ask the question. And now tomorrow night, if the Lord willing, after preaching the first night on the seven church ages, seeing where we were, were at positionally in the day that we're living, last night on the greatest criminal there is in the world, the mark of the beast, and tonight on the greatest blessing there is in the world, the seal of God, Amen. tomorrow night. I'm going to give you a chance to shoot at me now. <laughs> Tomorrow night is a question. And things that you don't understand concerning what's been preached, you've been gentleman and lady enough or Christian enough, I'd say, to hold your peace during the time of services. I want you to write out tomorrow night when you come to church and come just early as you can, because I'll have to come early to read and finally answer it back, of what your question is concerning the Scripture. And Sunday morning is a regular Sunday school. Sunday evening, perhaps Sunday evening, is baptismal service. There's some people to be baptized. And then Sunday night, we'll perhaps either have a gospel message or healing service. We'll see whatever the Lord leads for that night, for Sunday night, a message on that. Now, we found, before we approach this, that... There is no man in heaven, no man was on earth, or no man beneath the earth was worthy to take the book or to open it or to loose the seals thereof. No man. John saw it in the Revelation, and we're teaching Revelations now. And John wept, but there was a lamb that had been slain from the foundation of the world. He was worthy to come and take the book out of the right hand of him and set up on the throne and to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. And that lamb, of course, is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And now, if he's the only one that's worthy, he lives here once with us on earth in a form of a man. God lived in his Son, Christ Jesus, as the God-man. And he returned into glory, leaving this word, a little while and the world will see me no more. Yet ye shall see me, for I will be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. Amen. The person of the Holy Spirit, God, returning in the form, he, Jesus said, I came from God, I go to God. He came out of eternity, stepped down into time, went out of time back into eternity. 
and the world knew him not. He was in the world, the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. But as many as received him, they give the power to become sons of God. Right. And now, now Jesus Christ is with us. Yet a little while and the world sees me no more, yet ye shall see me. Now there's going to be a world that doesn't see, and there's going to be a ye that does see. For I, I is the personal pronoun, I will be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. And ye, the believers, will see me. Come on to the end of the world. Hebrews 13, 8 said, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Watching in his power, the same Lord Jesus, the same love, the same wonders, the same signs that followed him, moving right on down. He's in the mythical body now, the body of the resurrected ones from sin unto life. He lives in them. Amen. God in his great glory. God condensing, coming from the pillar of fire, no man could touch, down into a form of human flesh where you could touch, but he was born a virgin. Then out of there, giving his life to cru be crucified, to cleanse sinful man, and he could live right among man. What love that God has for man, that he unfolded himself down to make a clean way that he could live and love among man and women. Amen. Beautiful. Thank you. That's our Father. May we talk to him just now, the author of the book, before we turn the pages. Our kind Heavenly Father, we come to thee tonight in the way that has been promised to us, if you ask me anything in my name, that I'll do. So we have no righteousness, we have nothing that we can offer, only we come in the name of the Lord Jesus, knowing you, that you promised to hear through this name. Then we ask you, knowing that we have here under consideration tonight one of the most outstanding subjects of the day, the seal of God. Father, we pray, Lord, knowing that this little group of people that's gathered here, if I should mislead them, I'll give an account for it at the day of judgment. And last evening on the mark of the beast, oh, Father, we pray that you guide and direct those words. May it not return void, but may it accomplish that which it was purposed for when it was written in the book. And now, come, Holy One, take the word of God right out of the Bible, speak it to mortal lips and to mortal ears, and circumcise both the speaking and hearing that we might accomplish something by this gathering together tonight, knowing that there may be some here, if the world stands another year, will not be mortals on earth. And now we're at the house of correction, at the house of God, where we're to stand for correction. May the Holy Spirit correct me and close my mouth, as you did the lion's mouth with Daniel. Thou knowest my heart, if one word I should speak contrary or within myself. May the Holy Spirit functionize every word, just stand as an empty vessel, and may he speak the word of God tonight. For our hungry hearts are longing to hear from him. And may he who wrote the Bible come and interpret it through your humble servants here. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, for just a little background to start off tonight with the seal of God, don't forget, tomorrow night we want you to get your question and write it out plainly and lay it up on the platform early or on the pulpit early as you can. Now, this great subject we had last night, the first night before last, was the church and the church age, how that we've seen Jesus standing in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks to look upon as Jasper and Sardis stone, the beginning and the ending, Reuben and Benjamin. See the seven candlesticks are seven um, 
a lampstand standing and a rainbow over it as a covenant, and how he was uh, a, appeared, and his voice was the voice of many waters, both Christ and the church speaking together, with a golden girdle around about the breast part of the church covered over, holding the gospel, holding the righteousness of Christ over the church, standing on the brass foundation divine judgment, God poured out his divine judgment upon Christ, and he suffered the innocent for the guilty. Yeah. Then, seeing how it began with the church of Ephesus, then the second church age, the third church age, the fourth church age, the 1500 years of dark ages, out through the Lutheran age, the Philadelphia age, and down into the Laodicean age, the last age, seeing in the Old Testament how they were perfectly typed at the beginning of Solomon on down to in the time of Ahab, the dark age, and found out as Jezebel, Ahab, a borderline preacher, or a man who was on and off, just like a lot of lukewarm church members today, people on and off in the church today, tomorrow you can catch them anywhere, compromising, letting down going with the world, yet calling themselves Christians, and Ahab in that condition fell for a beautiful little woman, so wicked as all get out, and wedded her and brought idolatry into Israel right in the darkest times of Israel. Dark age. Now, we find out that to come out of there with a blast stand and on out, and finally lukewarm down to God's Shoot him from his mouth and accept the Gentiles. And now we find out that they start off from the first, the, the Ephesian church in the beginning of the church age. The next church age begins to cool off and get lukewarm, one on in, and the dark age. And just as, as that day, Ahab marrying an idolater, Jezebel, and brought idolatry into Israel. Then Protestantism married Romanism, Catholicism, and brought idolatry into the church, come out through Martin Luther, down through John Wesley, over into Pentecost, and out in feed from God's mouth, and God turns back to the Jews again. Just as perfect. Now, I know, I'm, you say now, I'm a typologist, that's right, because I, I know one thing. If I'm going towards my shadow, and I see what my shadow looks like, I have some conception of what I look like. Whether I'm a four-footed beast or a feathered ant bird or whatever it is, it'll shatter. And the Old Testament was a shatter of the new. We got it last night in Revelation 12. The woman with the law under her feet, the moon, and the sun at her head. And a type, how all those things, Hebrews, the 11th chapter tells us they were all types and shadows. I believe the Hebrews 12 saying, seeing that we're compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin as easy and beset us, that we might run with patience the race set before us. Now, we've seen those things. Then, last evening, we picked up back here to find out, or, or evening before last, we find out then that the first church, how it started off, it was inaugurated and began at the day of Pentecost where the Holy Spirit was poured out upon believers, and we saw the reaction of these believers, and how it acted upon them, and what they did, and the signs and wonders that followed them. Then we find, at the closing of that church age, about 300 years, they sprung up a heresy among them, called the doctrine of the, of the Nicolaitans. Then we find out it was deeds to begin with. In the next church age, it become a doctrine, and then become a persecution in the dark age. Then come out on the other side over here, and found out that it had got out with the Protestant churches that come out. Then we go back again then and find out how all lukewarms over here, in the end of the age, at this time, how it all cools off, just like it did under the Jews, so it's it under the Gentiles, cooling off as it's going this way, and the shadows dimming out, just like it was the days of Wesley. We brought that in last night in Luther. What a great revival you had. But the next round, it began to cool off. The next round, it got cooler, and now it's just a bunch of creeps and fawns. That's all it is. Yeah, 
And that's where it's been all the way along. So then we talk that now close now, listen. So that you'll be sure to remember, I'm not condemning Catholic people, I'm not condemning Protestant people. For out of both and all of them comes the seed of God Amen. by election. Those who are ordained to life will sit and walk in it. Those who cannot see walk in darkness. That's up to God. God does it. He's for and promised Abraham that he would save him and his seed. Now, if you got Abraham's seed, you got eternal life. That's all. And Amen. your heirs according to promise. And it's all by grace and by election of God. Now, notice. In this chair, and I'm just sometimes, maybe if I preach more or talk more, it's been years. This is the first teaching meeting I've had for about eight years. And it's just a little, maybe a little rusty on it in places. Anytime you're, you're, you ask me any question you wish to lay it on a platform or a pulpit, I'll be glad to get it. Now, notice, but all that I know of it, I never learned it by man, by a seminary. I prayed until I had a revelation of it, and it had to compare with God's Word. Amen. In the Old Testament, they had three ways of knowing a message. The first the way they'd find out, it was either written on the law, the next thing was the prophet, or the next thing was the Urimathundum. Now, any teacher knows what the Urimathundum was. It was a, a light that flashed over the breastplate of Aaron that they had hanging in the temple. Now, if a prophet prophesied and the light didn't flash on the year of Sunday, it was wrong. That was the divine answer of God. It was wrong. Then, if they, if a dreamer dreamed a dream and it didn't flash on the year of Sunday, it was wrong. Now, the year of Sunday has been done away with in that sense, but this is God's year of Sunday now. Amen. The Bible. If a prophet or a dreamer or whatever it is or a teacher hasn't based his theory exactly on thus saith the Lord, I don't believe it. See, got the place right here from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. Not just in one place. It's got to come to the Bible and tie it exactly together. Thanks. Yes, sir. It's got to dovetail with the rest of it and hook it all together. If you don't, you can take one thing and say that predatory and preach Catholicism out of the Bible. But it's got to dovetail completely from Genesis to Revelation to make the picture clear. That's right. And the Holy Ghost is the one who develops this picture for you if you'll just let him do it. Amen. He'll lead you into all life. The Bible said so. Jesus said he would do it. Now, notice, as again, now we find what they did there. Then after a while they got a doctrine, they got the persecution that went out. And then we come to find out that in this day now that the Bible predicted that there would be a time when man would receive a mark, and a mark of the beast, every time there's a little something flies up in the country, everybody says, that's the mark of the beast. When the old, I just got ordained in the Baptist church, when I heard about the NRA, well, everybody said, that's the mark of the beast. And then everything starts wrong, it's the mark of the beast. And now they say, here comes Russia down, communism, it's the mark of the beast. But it's a lie. It isn't the mark of the beast. The Bible tells what the mark of the beast is. Amen. The mark of the beast is not no great anti-religious, anti-country raised up like that. Communism is not Russia. Communism is a spirit. It's all Amen. we don't, don't have to worry about Russia. Our own rottenness is what's killing us. Amen. Communism Amen. working out among our churches and everything else. Amen. You have in our schools, in our homes, everywhere, in our nations. The whole thing's just worm eating. Amen. The robin pecking on the apple doesn't hurt it. It's the worm at the core that ruins the apple. That's Amen. what it is. It's this uh, rottenness among ourselves, going to call ourselves Christians and acting like the world and dressing like the world and partaking of the world and calling ourselves the world sick and tired of such a not only the world, a whole lot of the Christians are too. But I've often said, God help the day when man will be what he ought to be. Amen. If I was against him, I'd say I was against him. I'd be against him and everything I could be. But I'm for him, and I love him, Amen. and I believe him, and, I, and my life is in his hands to do whatever he wants to, because I believe that Christianity is the truth. Amen. That's right. I believe it's the truth. And traveling the world and looking over in different isms and so forth, all their founders are dead and laying in the grave, and they have theology. That's just about as far as the Christian church goes with it all. 
But those who know their God shall do exploits, and the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ lives in the man. That's right. He is not dead, he's risen. I'll be with you, even in you. And the things that I do shall you do also. That's it. Then the world looks out and says, fanaticism. You see where we got it last night with the help of God. Now we find out that the first thing that ever raised up to form any form of the beast at all, or the beast means the power. We went through all the symbols and everything last night to prove that the beast was the power, and it did not come out of Russia. It came Amen. out of Rome. Amen. Right. It came from Rome. And it was not. It was not a group of men. It was not a political organization. It was a religious institution. Amen. It was a church that sat on seven hills with one man who had controlling power over all the world in there. Amen. Exactly right. And we find out it was a woman. And pictured her up just as plain, not taking my own interpretation, just reading the Bible, that there's no other place in the world, no other city in the world rules over all the earth. And every nation, that streak of Romanism goes out, like in the ten toes of Daniel's vision. And we find out that that was the Vatican City. At least a dozen royal Catholics sitting here last night. They sat still and listened. They're all sincere. They're hungry. Now, you can't argue with the priest, he won't argue, because the priest, if the church says anything different from this Bible, the church is right. To me, the Bible's right and the church is wrong. See? Right. You can't argue with them. They, you got, you no way of arguing. There's no way of discussing or debating, because they believe what the church says, that's it. That's it. What the church says, no matter what the Bible says, is what the church says. They believe the church, we believe the Bible. Now we find out that she was called, the church was a woman, and she was called the flat, vulgar word of horror. And then she was a mother of horror. And we find out that the Catholic Church was the first mother church. She is exactly what she said she was. She is the first church to ever be organized. When God ever organized religion, it was the Catholic Church. The first organization was ever organized in the world of Christian religion, the Catholic Church. Now, and then, finding she was a mother of heart, she gave birth unto churches after her, because they couldn't have been boys, they had to be girls. And we find out that the Protestant Church is a product of the Catholic Church, the Church in the Scriptures. And looking at your history book. We see that the Protestant Church is a product, and the Protestant can't heart the Catholic because the both says they are hearts and whores. That's flat, but that thus saith the Lord. Right. What did he say? Let us, in the United States, they said, let us make an image unto the beast. If the beast was a power, and the power was an organization, not taken theory now, that's the word of God. The organization of the Catholic Church organized themselves together and made a agree and accepted what they call the early fathers together and organized the Catholic Church and made a, 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 a ritual and a, what they believed and what they would teach, a universal belief, and they forced it to people by punishment. And then when Martin Luther come out, seeing the Spirit of God leading out, Instead of letting the people stay free, he organized the church, an image likened unto the beast, a political power likened unto Instead of letting the people walk as God gives life, they organized under a distance, and they have to stay to that distance. God moved God out into the Methodist church. The Methodists had a revival that swept the world, the Holy Spirit with them, teaching sanctification. And the first thing you know, when they did that, then they organized the church, made an image unto the beast. Amen. Right, a political organized power Amen. to bind the people of God to a creed instead of being free to worship and walk in light as light is stored on the path. Amen. They set them back in that age. That was fine light for there. That was the light for the, for the Purgus church. But what about the Philadelphian church? That's another light. 
Amen. But to see, regardless of how much they organized, God moved right out in this church age anyhow. Amen. Sent a man out named John Wesley. Luther couldn't follow it because he didn't believe it. He's already organized back here. Then when John Wesley organized the type and got so pleased, it was time for this church age to come in. God sent the Pentecostal group. Well, here was the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Oh, the Methodists said, uh-oh, huh. we can't go with that. Mm -mm. We don't believe in that stuff. Oh, no, wow, this is the light that's walking in here. Here's the light we're over here now. Amen. We're going on towards the setting of the sun. Remember Amen. the prophet said, it'll be a day that'll be cloudy, neither night or day, but in the evening it shall be light. Amen. The light Amen. that once shined in the eastern country to the Jews, and the eastern, the Jews are an eastern people, is shining on the Gentiles, the same light, the same Holy Ghost in the last days over here. Amen. The same baptism of the Spirit. We've been down through all these ages through here, we're either light or dark, kind of a cloudy, gloomy day. But right here, as the light shines, just the same as it did there. That's why if you look up on it, Jasper and Sardis stone, Alpha, Omega, the beginning and the ending, he which was, which is, and shall come the offspring of David, the morning Thank star. You. There he is. I hope you see it. And remember, that we found without one mistake that the mark of the beast is a mark of apostasy. That is, church members hang into their church instead of walking in the light. They reject light, and there's nothing left but darkness. Amen. Right, both Catholic and Protestant. Amen. There was a beast, a whore, and she had harlot daughters. And these harlot daughters, when they broke forth, they were virgins in the light of that day. And they organized and bringing people down here, back in the air, making them the same kind of thing that Rome was in the beginning. Amen. The Bible said so. The beast and an image to the beast, the letter of his name, and so forth. How we went through the whole thing last night, and the Bible plainly, not somebody's theory, but the Bible laid it out that that seven head, ten horned beast from home was there at Rome, and was he which was, which is not, and which is, and which is not, one full bagger, one full bagger, and shall go into perdition. And find out that that same old woman brought forth some girls, they were virgins in the beginning, walking in what light they had, and then they began to act like prostitutes and went right back doing the same thing their mammy does. Amen. Exactly. Amen. Exactly. Amen. Let me tell you something, women. Amen. Listen, you might not have so much confidence in me now when I blast these things out. It's not to hurt you, it's to help you. Amen. But when you see people, the churches today, permitting their women, I, I'm going to get to the man too, but permitting their women to do the way they do today and then professing Christianity, I don't blame you women, I will ask you tonight, <laughs> but look, I, I don't blame you women now, but my sister, a lot of these seminary teachers up here, cemetery teachers or whatever you call it, from up here somewhere, is only letting you walk in those delusions. The Bible said they were blind, leading the blind. Yep, it's true. Amen. Now, and Jesus seeing this, Amen. and knowing that some of those Protestant churches would walk right straight up to the gate of life and turn away, Jesus in Matthew 24, 24, said that it'd be so, the Antichrist would be so close like the real one to deceive the very elect, if it's possible. Oh, help us, Lord. Amen. Now, See, Romanism, Catholicism, or oh, it knocked some of you Protestants in the head. But a man's got a little bit of grace about him, a little know a little about the Bible, he'll shun and walk away. That's right. It's a little it's black to him. He knows there's nothing that all that stuff that they teach. There's no scripture to it. So now and then they hit a little bit. The biggest lie was ever told had a lot of truth in it. That's right. The first one, Satan talking to Eve. He told a lot of truth. But he had it right at the bottom of it, he had a lie that condemned her and ruined the whole generation, the whole creation. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you have to watch that. It's got to come truth here, truth here, truth here, truth there. Every bit of it is the truth, lining up the same all the way through. Amen. Yeah. And then how people can see the early church back there was lit with that lamp, stand candlestick, and then over here see the same thing that happened, that happened back there, and the Word of God saying it would be Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, and refuse it, it goes to show they have rejected light and walking in darkness. Uh, that's that's true, my brother. 
Amen. I don't say that to be smart. God knows that. He knows my heart. I've got a ministry and lots before me yet. And knowing that someday at the judgment bar, I'm going to answer for these things. It's exactly Amen. right. Amen. I'd be found a false accuser, a false teacher, then God would condemn me. That's right. But if I do know the truth of these things and don't tell you, he'll condemn me then, sure enough. Yeah. Said to the watchman, watch. If you fail to warn, then uh, I'll require it your hand. But if you do warn and they go ahead, they'll die in their sins. But I won't require it your hand. You'll be free. So we want to be careful that we know what's truth according to the Bible and how that age started in. And what they did, and today to see the Protestant church right down exactly. Looking here, it used to be a long time ago, and you holding this people, it was wrong for you women to cut your hair. What? They come right about it. When the Bible said that uh, if any woman cuts her hair off, her husband has the right to give her divorce. Plain teaching, but that's the Bible. And you women get out here and cut your yard with overhauls on and with man's garments. And the Bible said, Almighty God said, a woman that'll put on a garment that pertains to a man, it's an abomination, filth in the sight of God. And you do it. And you smoke cigarettes, you go to dances and shows, and still belong to church. You show you took some sort of a something, you're not marked in heaven, the Holy Spirit. After a while, we get in there and show you different than that. Amen. Now, that's just a little thing. And you, man, going to the church, walking down the street with a cigar in your mouth like a, a Texas steer dehorn, and go, I'm not saying that for a joke. I don't believe in joking in the pulpit. I'm saying that's the truth. Go down the street and go set in the places and lie and steal and cheat one another. And deacons on the church board go down in the churches and play these old bunk old games. There's nothing in the world but common low down lottery. Right. And you do it. Then holler about a bookie. You're just as bad in your churches. You Methodist, Baptist, and Pentecostal, whoever you are, it does that. Now that's right. And you know that's the truth. But what is it? You heap right back like your mammy back down there. Exactly yep. the same thing in pot, can't call, it'll black. Right. And there's that spirit of things. But I'm nothing against the Catholic people. I'm nothing against the Methodists or the Baptists or the Presbyterians. God's got people, Abraham's seeds out there. It's not against the people, it's about their churches organize themselves out and they worship the church instead of God. Right. Yeah. Oh, you Protestants don't want to believe that, but you do it anyhow. Yeah. Well, I say, are you a Christian? Well, here I'll all go, Brother Bob, where the girl said, are you a Christian? She said, a Christian? I'll give you to understand I burn a candle every night. <laughs> well, now, you Protestants think that's something? Are you a Christian? I'll give you to understand I'm a Methodist or a Baptist. Well, that don't mean nothing, but you walked out of the day of grace for yourself to me. That's right. Amen. But that's all you are, just a Methodist or a Baptist. If you're not a Christian in that Methodist or Baptist or Catholic church, you're a law. Amen. Right. So there's exactly your mark. Both marks are spiritual. I'll prove it to you by the Bible. Both marks are spiritual marks. A lot of people thought they're going to go around and tattoo a, a something in your forehead and tattoo something in your hand. We found out last night that was a lie. Yes, sir. Amen. That's wrong. It's a spiritual mark. It's, it's just so hid. And look, many times, I know this may be ruffling our feathers, <laughs> and it, 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 it seems hard, but it'll, it'll straighten out if we just if we give God a little chance. I, I don't mean to be a rude, but I, I'm just trying to state facts with all my heart. When Jesus Christ seen that Protestant church fall from that Catholic church under and come out and go right straight back, returning back again, just the way that he said the Spirit will be so close to deceive the very elect. Did you realize, Christian friends, that the Antichrist, which is the mark of the beast, the Antichrist, anyone knows that, the Antichrist, that's his mark, is the, of his power. And the uh, beast is a the power. There's a the power of the Catholic church. There's a the power of the Methodist church. Amen. I went, you're not going to go to a very fine gentleman, if I'm not mistaken, he's sitting right here in church tonight. And 
Little E is right, and then comes the meeting right up here, not 20 miles from this place. And we, the people, I was just preaching the gospel of salvation. We had to climb over cars to get to the place. And that night the pastor called me out directly and said, I'm sorry to tell you, Reverend Brown, but they told me they had some sick people come in there. And our district man come in and said, no divine healing in a Methodist church. So you'll have to go to the platform, dismiss yourself, and leave the congregation. Amen. That's right. Wow, the power of the Methodist church. That's the beast power. Amen. The Baptist Church, the same Camelite, Lutheran, and all the rest of them, and the Pentecostal as bad. Amen. Right. Amen. I've had Pentecostal people, and the Assemblies of God has gone into the Council of Churches, which is a, with a they just hooked herself right up there with the old mother heart. So every church organization comes from Rome. There's a mother of it, and I'm not a latter day saint or latter day reign. I don't know what you call it. I don't, I'm none of that. But I mean this, that men and women should be free in Christ Jesus to walk in life. Amen. And every church should be the same thing. That's true. Amen. Now, notice this. How the Bible gets that, that organization. Remember, there for it lays, right there. And we find out that when the Catholic Church started back there, they got a frowny baptism they come out with. Sprinkling instead of baptizing. There is not one scripture in the Bible for that. Amen. And just not only that, but the Holy Ghost and water baptism and farms and titles and everything else, just making a mock out of the real. And there's not a minister in the land that can show me one place where that was ever done in the early church. Amen. Right. It's not in the Bible. But they come out with it, and we bow right down to it. You see where we're going right back to? And today you're wondering why we haven't got a revival. That's what it is, brother. What we need today is a good old-time St. Paul's revival and the Bible Holy Ghost back in the land. Amen. Amen. That's what we need. Amen. Now, and they took the bark of the beast or the letter of his name that they made an image to. The image was an organization just like the Catholic Church. They organized it and made an image of the Catholic Church. Is the Methodist Church an image of it? The Baptist Church, the Presbyterian Church, the Pentecostal Church, the Holy Church, the Pilgrim Holiness, the United Brethren, every one that organized, pattern it off there, it never was in God's Bible. Right. Organization. Organizing. God's the leader. Take it all back as far as you want to. Look at Israel coming up out of Egypt. And all that is more to stand up there, fundamental, offering sacrifices, seven altars, seven goat, seven sheep, speaking of the coming of Christ, seven ox, a clean offering. Right there is great prophets stand out there, Balaam, to curse Israel. And there was Israel. There was more of a great nation. There was the Amorites and all great nations organized together as a nation. And Israel was scattered out there on the prairies with a bunch of tents. They were pilgrims and strangers seeking a city to come. Amen. Strictly interdenominational. And what did they do? They had signs and wonders following them. These didn't, and they were jealous of those. Them were spirits. God takes his man, but never his spirit. He's taken Elijah, and his spirit come up on Elijah. Several hundred years later, come up on John the Baptist, predicted again in the last days. The devil takes his spirit character, but never his spirit. That same religious teachers that condemn Jesus Christ because of his miracles and signs and wonders, and differing with him on the scripture, was flat enough to come and tell him about it. That same spirit lives right down in the ecclesiastical teachers today, for they are days of God to come into that condemnation. Amen. What the Bible says, man of old, for our day to this condemnation, to turn the grace of our Lord into lasciviousness. Amen. Exactly right. Jude, the third, the third verse of uh, Jude, you can find it. That's right. Notice, all those things proving there, there is the mark of the beast. There's where it's at. So when you're running around here saying, well, I'll show when the mark of the beast comes, be careful if you haven't already got it. And those who have so will be punished and fire and brimstone poured out of the cup of God's indignation shall be tormented day and night forever and forever. Yeah. It's a serious thing. Now, how is your escape? There's going to be a time which is coming right now. Notice. 
And in that organization moving down, let me give you a little hint here. And in that organization moving down like that, it's coming a time to where you will have to belong into that organization or you can't buy or sell or have Amen. that mark of apostasy. Amen. Church, Amen. mark, you have to belong to some organization or you can't buy or sell. And listen, to you people who know what's truth, I'm not saying get away from the church. I ain't saying nothing about you or about your members. I'm saying about headquarters back then when they organized the things and they, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And they set that ironclad rule and God tears it to pieces and takes the church right out of it. Amen. They always did it. Look in the journey of the children of Israel. They built a fire. They stayed overnight. The pillar of fire hung over them. And I don't care what time of day or night it was, when that pillar of fire left, trumpets blowed, and Israel packed camp and left. If it was midnight, two o'clock in the afternoon, whenever it was, they packed camp and followed the pillar of fire. Is that right? Amen. They followed the fire. Well, when Martin Luther saw the fire of God move out, Martin Luther come out, followed the fire out of Catholicism. But he built under there and organized the church, and he couldn't move. The fire moved out on out, and Wesley saw it, and away he went after it. That's right. The fire of God left Luther setting. Then the first thing you know, Wesley built under the Western Methodist Church, and then come Alexander Campbell, John Smith of the Baptist, and so forth like that, and Moody, and all of that. Then the first thing you know, they begin to get ritual and starch and cold when the old prophets die off, and so forth. This new bunch come on with nothing but a seminary education. And then the first thing you know, the hands got in the pie and messed it up, and the Holy Ghost moved out in the Pentecostal star, and away they went. Right. Moved right on out away from the Methodists and Baptists and so forth. Now the cruel thing of it, but to fulfill God's word, the Pentecostals organized. Just as cold and ritual as the rest of them. But look, there will never be another church age. The last age is the lady of seeing church age, which is neither a hot nor a cold. Just about enough religion when the music to playing to dance up and down the aisle and sit down and go home and talk about your neighbor. What we need today is an old-fashioned Holy Ghost God set burn out uh, revival. Uh, you, lay on your face and cry Amen. day and night and weep and wail and carry on for the sins Amen. of the world. We'll get into it. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. But there we are. That's just where we got lukewarm. God said, just make you sick in my stomach. I just spew oh, you from my mouth. Hallelujah. That's the church, the Protestant church, rejected. The Protestant church is rejected from Pentecostal Luther. Every bit of it. God's Word says so. Amen. But out of each one of those churches, he's taken an elect. He's taken a seat of every one. Out of the Methodists, the Baptists, the Presbyterian, the Lutherans, all through there, Catholic and all, he's taken a remnant, taken the people out. Amen. You're not long ago, a little lady laying out here in Louisville, Catholic, Dying. I went over there and a priest said, Nonsense to such a thing. And her husband said, Step aside. Let him come in. Walked in there and the woman was supposed to be dead the next morning. While praying for a vision broke forth and said, Thus saith the Lord. Hey. That's right. The next morning, told her how many hours it'd be, just exactly as you thought. Once you go home well, they laughed at the storm. In the very same hour the Holy Spirit spoke, she went home a well woman as hey. well today. She was hey. a Catholic. They were Catholic. They was a Catholic. When you received light in the Old Testament, let me show you the brand now. Listen close now. I'm going to go straight to my subject. Look. In the Old Testament, when a slave was under slavery, and then he had his bought over there with a price, he had to serve that master until the year of Jubilee. And when the year of Jubilee comes, there was a trumpet sounded. And when the slave was out there, him and his kiddies and wife and all of them wanted to return to the old homeland, and they were stopping in the fields and the taskmaster beating them this way and that way. And then when the Jubilee priest come by, sounding the trumpet, and that priest sounded the trumpet, and that man he heard the trumpet, he could drop his hole. He could drop whatever he's doing, look in the taskmaster's face and say, You can't hit me one more time. I'm free. Walk right away and go home. Why? There's the sounding of Jubilee. When they heard the sound. And that's the gospel. 
the jubilee that you're free from sin, you're free from all these filthy habits and things that the world produced here in the name of religion, under both Protestant and Catholicism, under the mark of the beast. That's right, you're free. You don't have to be. But then, if that man refused to receive that, then that man was taken from there to the post of the altar of the church and had a mark put on him, bore a hole in his ear, and he was a servant to that master as long as he lived. And you refuse to accept gospel light when it's preached in the power of the Holy Ghost by the Bible. Amen. You can seal yourself to your eternal destination. Amen. 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 Thank you. Now look, one more little thing, if you'll excuse me for making that remark a few moments ago about stopping in. But look here, deceive the very elect. Now, we've been hitting Lutheran Baptists and so forth, and the Catholics. Now let me get out of you holiness people just a minute. Okay? I believe in holiness. You must be holy. Amen. Without holiness, no man shall see God. Not my holiness, his holiness. And nothing I can do about it is what he's done for me. Amen. Don't stand in my own because I have none. Don't even try to have any. I don't try to say these. Are you trying to hold on, Brother Ram? No, sir. I just turn loose and let him hold on. Amen. That's right. He's the one holding on. Just stay dead. That's all you have to do. Just keep yourself dead. He'll hold on. He's already held on. Hallelujah. He held there until he said it's finished. Amen. That settled it. Holy God witness to the same. It's finished. But holiness people, you Nazarenes and pilgrim holiness now, remember, under the power and the come out of the Wesley Church or the Methodist Church, when they organized, you dear holiness people come out and said, we will continue in holiness. That was wonderful. You just kept up that age, that Philadelphia age, to come to the Lady of Sin. But when the baptism of the Holy Ghost comes and the signs turn back to the church, you called it the devil. Because they spoke with tongues and believed in these things. You said it was of the devil. Yeah. And when you did that, you blasphemed the Holy Ghost. Right. How can I say to my hand, I have no need of you? Yeah. If there's teachers, they're speaking in tongues. Yeah. If there's evangelists, there's also gifts of healing. Yeah. How can the foot say to the eye, I have no need of you? See? Yeah. You, if you're a born child of God, you walk and accept everything God says is right. You walk out of your life. When it's time for the church to move, Luther moves. When it comes time for the, the church to move its hands, Wesley moves the hands. Amen. When it comes time for the church to speak, Pentecost come on the scene. That's right. But now, notice, you say, I the type, you say, is there a type of that? Yes, sir. Do you realize that Judas is a carrot? The real Antichrist was a very religious man. Yeah. Did you realize that? They had so much confidence in him, the brethren, until he was the treasure of the church. And Judas Iscariot was justified by faith bleeding on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. He was sanctified through the word, Hebrews 17, 17. I mean, uh, St. John 17, 17. Sanctify them, Father, through the truth. Thy word is the truth. And he was the word. Amen. And they were given power to go out and preach the gospel and to cast out devils and to heal the sick. Judas is church. Matthew 10 was mentioned among them. And they went out and cast out devils and preached the gospel in such a way those sinners repented and devils left. And they come back rejoicing and shouting and having a big time like an old holiness camp meeting. Amen. And Judas was right with them. That's exactly right. Right along with him. But when it comes time for Pentecost, Judas showed his colors. Amen. That's where the Holy Church showed his colors, right there. Went right around and denied the very Holy Spirit that was leading it into deeper water, turned right around and denied it. I know they got a lot of fanatics. I'm not Pentecost. I've never belonged to a Pentecostal organization. Never. I've stood in the breach. I am not Pentecost Methodist Baptist, I'm just a Bible Christian. That's all. Amen. I believe what the Word says. And I cannot deny the gift of speaking in tongues. If I do, I'll deny teaching and every other inspired gift. Amen. That's Amen. right. I have never agreed with the Pentecostal brother on the only evidence of speaking in tongues. I don't do that. Now, that's all right. If they believe it that way, that's their business. See, but that's perfectly all right. I, Paul said, I would that you all speak with tongues. I'd like to see everyone. 
be that close to God. They've got a lot of makeup, a lot of phony belief. They've got out there a lot of times and acted like they had the Holy Ghost and said something that wasn't speaking and done. Their life proved what it was. But there's been a real genuine article going on Amen. all the time. Amen. Well, why wouldn't the devil throw out brawny crow bait? Sure he would to try to hinder. Amen. He sold out the same thing in holiness. He sold out the same thing in Methodist. He's throwing out the same thing in Luther's day. Yeah. And he's throwing out the same thing today. Yeah. And under the power of gifts of divine healing and discernment, he's throwing the same things out. Yeah. But what does the scarecrow mean to you? If you could talk bird talk, birds say, when I see a scarecrow, that's a meal ticket. The best apples there is is right around where all the clubs are laying and the scarecrows are hanging up. Yeah. That's right. But you see how that spirit moves out up here? And Jesus looked and foresaw that through that Catholic Church coming out. To, don't call no man father. Don't use vain repetitions. All these things come out to Now be careful. The Antichrist will be so close to to see the very elect if possible. Look, there were how many virgins went to meet the law? Ten. All of them were virgins. What does sanctify mean? Pure, holy virgin. Amen. Ten of them were virgins. Five had no oil in their land. Five had oil in their land. These five were just as holy and virgin as these was. Yeah. But what does oil represent in the Bible? What were we taking it last night, night before? Spirit. The Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit, they cleaned themselves up and sat there, but there was a praying and stood back from yeah. the fountain Amen. that poured in the oil. Thank you, Jesus. See? Organize themselves and settle down, and there they are. Luke 1. Amen. That's where the church age went. Hallelujah. Now, now we're coming to the mark of God. I've got 30 minutes, the Lord willing. Now I want you to turn with me first and find out how essential this mark of God. Remember what the mark of the beast is. Not communism. The mark of the beast comes from Rome throughout the world. The Catholicism with Protestantism joined into it. Organized religion. And they're going to unionize the churches so every church will have to bow to that thing or interdenominations or kicked on the sidelines. Right. Revelations, the ninth chapter now. Let's read real close here for a few moments of God willing and see what he says in his word. Now, of, of Revelation and the fourth verse, listen to this. And it was commanded them when they seen the plagues being poured that they should not hurt the grass or the trees Neither any green thing, neither any tree, but those men which have not the seal of God in their forehead. When the plagues was coming, only thing was protected was those who were sealed away in the kingdom of God. This is the investigation in judgment. When men are, and if God will help me in a few minutes, we'll prove it by the word of the Lord. Amen. That this is the time of the sealing of the place. And those who reject it is nothing less but eternal punishment. Now, to go over in the Old Testament, and let's go over here, if you will, to the book of Ezekiel, if you will. And let's read a while in Ezekiel 9. Now, by God's help now, may he help us to settle down now for teaching just for the next 30 minutes of God willing. Now, this is pertaining, you mark it, Ezekiel 9. This is the pertaining, the first thing we ought to get settled down, what is the seal of God? Amen. Don't you think that would be essential? Yes, is the Bible a good enough word for you? Yes. Now, I know you Advent brothers saying keeping the Sabbath day, but there's not one speck of Scripture to support that. In the New Testament. Let's find out what the seal of God is, of course. Turn to Ephesians 4.30. Amen. 4.30 and 1.13. Mark it down. Ephesians 4.30 says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of your redemption. Amen. Now, what does sealing mean? Sealing is a sign of completion. Is that right? Well, did you ever see a railroader loading a car? He'll go out and he'll set so much here and so much here. The inspector comes by. He looks in. And if this is a little loose, it shakes. No. Nope. Won't seal it. Got to carry it out and do it over again. Next thing he'll try to load it again, he'll get this wrong. The inspector comes out. Wrong. Do it over again. And that's what God's been doing with his church for a long time. Amen. You load up and you're going to heaven. You're taking everything with you. Your card game. <laughs> 
Every other thing that you can load into the church and you're trying to take it with it, God just condemns it. Ain't ready for stealing. But when God sees a man contract, broken spirit, sin, fear, and heart down at the altar, God closes the door of the world to him and seals him in there by the baptism of the Holy Ghost and it lashes until Jesus comes. Amen. Not from one revival to the other, but until the day of your redemption. When that box car, the door is closed and the government seals put on it, it cannot be opened no more until it reaches its final destination. Amen. And every man that's born again and sealed into the kingdom of God has no more desire in the world until the day Jesus Christ takes him into the kingdom. Hallelujah. So if you're having trouble and saying you got the Holy Ghost, whether you belong to Methodist Church, Baptist Church, Pentecostal Church, whether you shout and spoke with tongues, baptized forward, backward, sprinkled, if you're still having that kind of trouble, you better come back and check up on the load. That's right. Amen. Take too much wheat, it's too loose shaking. God won't see it that way. Uh, when a grain of wheat falls into the earth, no matter if that grain of wheat dies to itself, it can't produce a cup of bird to save its soul. Amen. A grain of wheat will bring forth a grain of wheat just as sure as anything. And if we are soaked with the incorruptible seed of God, how can Amen. it produce anything but a life, a Christ life? The Holy oh, Spirit leading your church leads it in the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and you're sealed until the day of their redemption. Hallelujah. That's the Bible. Read not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed until the day of your redemption. Ephesians 4.30. Now, before the Holy Spirit ever comes, he sealed away before this Gentile age ever started. He sealed away under them golden candlesticks. We had a chart to get it. Back there under that age, he kept fooling with them down through Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, and uh, all down through the dark age of that in the days of Ahab, on down Solomon, so forth, until it came out of that lukewarm condition. But just before he closed that dispensation there, he gave a great pressure of the Holy Ghost to the Jews alone. Amen. Go not in the way of the Gentiles, but go to the lost sheep of Israel. Is that right? Amen. He came to his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, gave he the power to become the offsprings of God. Amen. He said, I give unto them eternal life. Eternal life comes in the Greek word of Zoe. Zoe is that life. Zoe is the life of God. And if the life of God living in you produces a godly life, Amen. which is just as I'm saying in this platform. Amen. And a man of God can no more perish than God can perish because God's in the man. Amen. 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 See, the he that heareth my words and believeth on him and sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation. Amen. But hath everlasting life. Hallelujah. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood, I'll raise him up here by the that's his word. What a consolation to the believer and what a condemnation to those who reject their walk into life. It's getting warm, isn't it? Amen. All right. It's good for you. Notice. See if this is true. Brother, we could take it scripture after scripture, week after week, week after week, and stay on this same subject for a year. Still not pull it out of the Bible. All of it. And write on the same thing. Now, for just a little preliminary here, we're going back and find out what rejecting the baptism of the Holy Ghost means to you. What it meant to him in the days. Now, in Ezekiel, the ninth chapter, the prophet seen Jerusalem. Now, remember, we're talking over in that space there. The Jews, just before they're ending up. Now, we're in the Gentiles as they're ending up. Then we're going into the millennium. All right. But now, watch here. We're ending up the Jews now. The prophet foresees it. This is several hundred years, about 800 years before the coming of the Lord, and it was prophesied by the prophet. Now listen close while we read. He cried also in my ear with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that had charge over the city to draw near, and every man with a slaughtering weapon or destroying weapon in his hand. Now watch closely now as we read. And the whole six men came from the higher gate which uh, lies towards the north, and every man a slaughtering weapon in his hand. And the man among them with white clothes, clothes and linen, with a rider's ink horn by his side. 
And they went and stood before, beside the brazen altar. And the glory of the Lord God of Israel was gone up from the cherubims whereupon he was to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed in linen, which had a writer's ink on by his side. Listen. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, destiny to Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the forehead of the man that sigh and cry for the abominations done in the midst thereof. And then to the others he said in mine ear, Go after them through the city, and smite, and let not your eyes spare, neither have pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids, little children, and women, but come not nigh unto any upon which the mark. And he began at the sanctuary, and beginning at the ancient of man, which were before the house. Now, watch the prophet in the Spirit, taken up in the glory. God said, I'm going to show you how I'm going to settle it with the Jews before coming to the Gentiles. Read the verse of the chapter before it. Now, when he came in there, he said, I saw, first he saw sin in the city like he never saw before. And he saw Jerusalem. Now, remember, it was destined only to the Jews, not the Gentiles, the Jews. And their capital, Jerusalem. Just like last night we had a destination to the Protestants. Now, tonight is to the Jews. He said, go through the city. Here come men with slaughtering weapons in their hands, going forth to slaughter everything in the city. He said, I just hold it just a minute. And out of there come a man dressed in white. Let's stop a minute. Dressed in white. Righteousness. Holiness. Dressed in white who had an ink horn at his side. He said, go through the city first before they come and put a mark upon the forehead, a mark upon the forehead of every man, woman, boy, and girl in the city that sighs and cries for the abomination that's did in the city, for the sins of the people. Put a mark upon them. And then as he went through and marked, he returned back and said, it's done. Then he sent the man to go forth and don't you spare nothing, but you utterly slay everything that hasn't got that mark upon it. Look at your brother. That marker was none other than the Holy Spirit. Amen. And notice, if he come to Jeffersonville tonight to the Brandon Tabernacle or any other tabernacle in the city or any other church, who would he put a mark upon? that were so sincere and honest before God that they wept and cried and prayed day and night for the sin of the city. What would it do to the preachers that let their women get out here in bathing suits and stretch out in shorts and walk up and down the street and sing in the choir and paint up and act like Jesse Bell and women men out there smoking and drinking and carrying on and gambling and everything else and they act as if they was unconcerned about going to Sunday chicken dinner or a party somewhere. Uh, Stay home on Wednesday night to look at television instead of stand a prayer meeting in the summertime, close the church for this purpose. Uh, what would he feel? Uh, what we need tonight is a lot of this Hollywood evangelism choked down in a little place and God sent revival. Man, he went and get out of the altar and quickly shaking hands and holding up hands and sprinkling and baptizing his face forward, backwards, and all these other little forms and isms and get out to a real contrite, broken spirit worse Amen. Let's come together. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 That's the kind gets the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That's right. No matter whether they're Methodist, Baptist, or Catholic, or whatever they are, when they get before it all, they cry day and night, oh Lord God, look at the sins of this city. My heart can't rest. I can't rest, Lord. You see these things going on. Oh God, do something. Send us an old fashioned revival. You're on the borderline of getting the Holy Ghost, man, brother. Amen. But if you walk up there because you jumped up and down, or because you danced with the music, or because you've done something else, and walk around and blowing up and unconcerned and pouting and fussing and church joining and jumping from place to place, it shows you never got nothing in the beginning. 
Brother, I, I should sign medicine, but it'll show up the captain. Uh, that's right. Oh, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. He'll bring you out of the sea more among you. Amen. But like Moses, I'd like to look at his medicine kit, wouldn't you? Yeah. Had two million people out there. Would you like to see Moses' medicine kit? What he had? All them old men and hundreds of little babies born every night and crippled people and sick people. And when he come out in 40 years, there wasn't even one, one feeble one among them. Uh, Wouldn't some of you doctors sit here tonight like to see his medicine kit? Let's look at it and see what it is. I look back. We'll find out. I'm the Lord that healeth thee. <laughs> That's it. Amen. 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 Say, go to be a baby boy. I'm the Lord that healeth thee. Hey. He's got pneumonia. I'm the Lord that healeth thee. That's the only prescription he could give. <laughs> That's the only one he needed. That's the only one he had. That's what God supplied for him. Hey. But today, oh, we don't believe in that. No, but God never changes. Amen. Amen. Same. Thank you. If this sin and carrying all the way people don't say on the name of Christianity, made God sick in his stomach out there was an abomination for people to do that, it's an abomination today. Amen. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, I feel religion. Hallelujah. Notice, look here. He said, you go through the city, and you put a mark upon man that sigh and cry for the abominations done in the city. And then he said, after you do that, he turned his man with a sword and weapon forth, and he went forth and slayed everything. Jesus. Now, his story is just a moment. Jesus came in the flesh. God manifested in the flesh. God was in Christ, reconciled the world to himself. And when he came in the flesh, he went around teaching. They called him Beelzebub, fortune teller. They made fun of him, of his birth, everything else, rejected him, casted him out. He said, whosoever speaks against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Ghost, it'll never be forgiven him. This world will world will come. He called a few Jews together. He didn't go to the Gentiles. He went to the Jews. He was sent to the Jews. It was a Gentile dispensation. The life candle was burning in the Jewish age. And he went there. And there was a few people that received him, a called out, just exactly like he is today. Amen. Just as the Holy Ghost speaking out of Jesus Christ called it out then, so is the Holy Ghost speaking out of Jesus Christ Amen. calling out today. Amen. They believe the supernatural. They watch their leaders. They watch him. They know he was a king of prophets. They know whatever he was. What he spoke, God confirmed and said the truth. They know they had the truth. They know who they was believing. And they went ahead with Jesus. Then they crucified him. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't even know what they're doing. But when the day of Pentecost had fully come, there's a bunch of little weeping people crying and it's going on. And when the day of Pentecost fully come, suddenly there came a priest up the road with a torture box, communion box, and said, Look out your tongue now, I'll drink the wine. <laughs> what nonsense. Up the road come a Protestant preacher and said, We'll take the right hand of fellowship and take six months of probation. <laughs> nonsense. I'll sprinkle you, about baptize you, I'll take you this way, take you to church, give the right hand of fellowship. Nonsense. But when the day of Pentecost is fully come, suddenly there came from heaven and the rushing by the wind and filled all the house where they were setting cold and tongues set up on a night fire. They begin to jabber and jammer and slobber and spit and go on. You say not? I'll prove it to you by the Bible. Yes, sir. You mean to tell me that's what they did? That's what the Bible says. Amen. Did you know Isaiah prophesied? Let me read you a little something out of Isaiah here just a minute. Amen. Thank you. Isaiah, the 28th chapter, and beginning with the 8th verse. For all the tables are full of vomit, speaking to this day, and filth in it, so that there is no clean place. But if that wasn't a picture of the Jews, who shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? We're talking about doctrine tonight. They that are weaned from the milk, and they that are drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. That's the way the gospel comes. From Genesis to Revelation. For with stammered lips, and with other tongues will I speak to this people, and this is the rest, the peace, 
Amen. But I said she'd come, and for all this they would not hear, but walked away wagging their heads. Amen. There you are! Amen. That's what he said. That was my word. That's his word. Hallelujah. Change it if he can. It can never be changed. He said, precept upon precept, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. The whole gospel must be brought out. The full Amen. gospel must be given here. Amen. And they preached it. And when they did, the power of the Holy Ghost come, and those Jews had made fun of Jesus, but they laughed and ha, 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 these men are full of new wine. They healed their eternal destination. Amen. They said, why is it we can hear in our own tongue the wonderful works they're speaking? Well, these men are full of new wine. Oh, oh they mocked and laughed. And Peter, that little holy roller soapbox preacher, Set him out of soapbox and jumped up for him and said, You man of Judea and you that dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known you and hearken to my voice, for this is this is that which is spoken of with the prophet Joel. See, he's not an hour full of new wine, he's just both, see, it's the third hour of the day, but this is that. Amen. You quote it back to the Bible. I've often yeah, said, if this ain't that, I'll just keep this to that tongue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. So this is that when you told of the top of Job. Yeah. They will come to pass in the last days, the last 2,000 years. First 2,000 destroyed the world with water. Second 2,000 Christ comes. In the last 2,000 years, I'll pour out my spirit. Yeah. Amen. Thank Hallelujah. You. Hallelujah. Not all educate some preachers and send out some priests, but I'll pour out my spirit from on high. There was tons and dollars to prophesy. Up all my hands made and they said, I'll pour out of my spirit and they shall prophesy. I'll show signs in the heavens above and the earth below. Amen. That's what it was. That was an alteration. And those Jews laughed and made fun and said they're full of new wine. That sealed their destination. In 1896, come the Titus coming down from the heart Jerusalem was compassed about with armies. And you know what takes place? Those Jews said, now we shall return to the house of the Lord. But those who were warned and filled with the Holy Ghost, as Josephus says, those cannibal type people who have been eating the body of this Jesus of Nazareth, said they hid his body away and have been eating of it. <laughs> they were eating the communion. Said that they are them bunch back there, them heretics. Did you know that people back there were called heretics? Amen. Did you know that? Yeah. You know what a heretic is? Somebody crazy. Yeah. Look at St. Paul. Now, you people, you, you bad disciples to say, St. Paul, oh, I believe him. You Catholics say, oh, St. Paul, he kissed two or three feet away on the statues over there at Rome. St. Paul, yes, sir. Look what St. Paul said when he was before Agrippa. He said, in the way they call heresy, holy roar, that's the way I worship God. Amen. Amen. I like to join hands with you and say, I do the same, Paul. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Uh, the same thing. 1900 years of fast, Paul. I still see the same thing. Still got the Holy Ghost. Same as God. Same wonders. Everything just the same. Still going on. Same Holy Ghost. Still stealing away until when the day of the redemption. This gospel means preach what? Gospel. What is the gospel? Not the word. Only Paul said the gospel comes to us not word only, but through power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Amen. the gospel. Paul said, I ever come with some seminary education, come speaking these swell words, for your salvation to be based upon swell words and enchanting lips and some doxology or apostles' creed or something like that. I never come to you like that, but I come to you knowing only one thing, the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Holy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God gives us more power. Amen. It won't pour the punches, but lay it out there without God. Without some seminary gloves, Amen. Amen. Seal of God. Amen. Amen. Now, how much time we got? Plenty, haven't we? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's okay. March Saturday night don't work. Amen. All right. All right. Remember, just a, just a few minutes. Pray. Notice, brother, this is a sincere time. This is a time where we ought to be taking inventory. I'm not standing here acting a clown. If I was, I'd go to order and repent. I may be acting like a clown to somebody, but I don't mean to be. I act a little silly once in a while. I can't help that. Something gets on me makes me act like that. So I can't help that. But in my heart, brother, I believe it with all of my heart. Hey, for 20 some odd years, I preached it through this pulpit. Amen. Around the world, and God confirmed it with signs and wonders. Amen. 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 Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. Now he said, call them with the weapons to come forward. 
they refused to receive that mark. And he went forth and tied up seats to the walls of Jerusalem, and they ran into the city. They starved them in there till they boiled one another's children to eat it. They eat the bark off the tree, the grass off the ground. And then when finally they had to give up, Titus, when he went into Jerusalem, he utterly destroyed everything in there, killed women, children, babies, priests, everything else, and burnt the city. And Jesus said, there'll come a time there won't be one stone left. So look at our great big cathedral, brother, we are Baptists or Baptists or Pentecostals or whatever. He said, there won't be one stone left upon another. Shows that God doesn't dwell in houses made with hands. God dwells in a human heart. Where a body has thou prepared me, the Holy Ghost don't dwell in a house, it dwells in a heart. Amen. That's the temple you owe, not that you're the temples of the living God. Amen. Build a temple, build a church. All your faith built around your temple or your church are wooden idols. Taking the mark of the beast and don't know it. That's right. Hover out and spending all your time preaching to support your organization and going this is straight to hell with it as they can go. I'll tell you, brother, it's time man woke up and preached the gospel with the power of the Holy Ghost. Everywhere, Paul Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Catholic, fell to the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now you say the old shepherd carried honey, put it on the rock when the six sheep licked it got well. Brother, I got a whole script bag full of it here tonight. Now I put it on the rock, Christ Jesus. And six sheep can lick and get well. That's right. Brother, listen, I'll never put it on any church. It don't belong on any church. It belongs on Christ. Amen. That's exactly right. Oh, uh, well, yes, we believe in Christ. You're worth proof what you believe. Jesus said, these signs, S-H-A-L-L, shall follow them to believe to the end of the world. Amen. And in my name they shall cast out devils, speak with new tongues. If they should take up a serpent or drink a daily thing, it wouldn't harm them. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. That's what Jesus said. Amen. That's the last word fell from his lips, and he was taken up to heaven. And people who go forth believing and preaching divine healing and the powers of God, the world calls them crazy. And the Bible said if they call the master house Beelzebub, how much more will he call them his disciples? Amen. Condemned. There they lay. All died just exactly. But Josephus said those people who were those Christian type people had went from Jerusalem to Judea and escaped all this wrath. Now, that was the ending of the Jews. Quickly now, for the next few minutes, let's end the Gentiles right quick. Let's come over to Revelation, the seventh chapter, where we'll end up the Gentile dispensation. See if this is right or not. That was where the prophet of Ezekiel 9 prophesied the ending of that age. Now, here's the Holy Spirit prophesying the end of this thing. Listen close now as I read carefully. And after these things, Revelation 7, after these things, I saw four angels. That was the horse riders went forth at the sixth chapter. And how they went forth, the pale horse, the black horse, the red horse, and so forth, which them riders had been riding the land for a long time. I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds, that they should not blow up on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Now watch. The beast we saw first. I saw four angels standing at the four corners, four places around the earth. An angel holding the four winds. Angels are messengers. The Bible said so. And the winds are wars and strife. He was holding the four winds. Here they were going in. Now watch. Second verse. And I saw another angel ascending from the East, having the S-E-A-L, the finished work, in other words, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the angels whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, the tree, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. But, I'll read on down. And I heard the number of them were sealed, and ever sealed, uh, uh, Seal a hundred and forty and four thousand of the tribe of, of the tribe of the children of Israel, of the tribe of Judah twelve, and on down, and Benjamin and Gad and Reuben, on down to the twelve, and on down to the twelve tribes at the end of the eighth verse, and twelve times twelve what? Hundred and forty-four. Hundred and forty-four thousand all of Jews. Now what? And after this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man can number, of all kindred sons and nations. Where did they come up from? 
You see the sin where those Jews at the end, when the angels are given to go forth to destroy, said he has seen in hell. But where did these come from? Of all kindred tongue and nations, they appeared on the scene. And peoples and tongues stood before the Lamb, and before the, clo the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. The bride, the Gentile bride, had been sealed away here. What? And he cried with a loud voice, saying, uh, Salvation to our God that set us upon the throne, and to the Lamb. And, and the angels that stood around about the throne, the elders, the four beasts, fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Listen, if this don't sound like a Holy Ghost meeting, a blessings, amen, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, power, might, be to our God forever and ever, amen. That don't sound like some kind of a ritualistic baccalaureate service to me. That sound like an old-fashioned Holy Ghost outpouring to me. Then people have been somewhere, they know what to do when they've seen the Lamb sitting on his own. And one of the elders uh, said unto me, What are these in arrayed in white robes, and whence come a thing? Now, you know all the Jews, but where these come from? All kindred, tongues, and nations. What? And I said unto him, Sir, I know it. John <laughs> said, I just don't know. And he said unto me, These are they that had that. <laughs> I guess. All right. These are they which come up out of great tribulations, called holy lords, made fun of, persecuted, laughed at. Come up out of great tribulation and have washed the robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. What? They are before the throne of God. Where does the wife stay? Where does the queen stay? That's the bride, the Gentile bride. And they serve him day and night in the temple. My wife serves me at the house day and night. See? That's the bride of Jesus. That's the Gentile bride. And they are set up before the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more. Amen. Hallelujah. What days are over. Amen. Well, we missed the many meal, but we'll never miss one man. Amen. Amen. I know my poor old mother sat here tonight. I've seen her get up to the table. With we had coffee and some stale bread. She poor old put some sugar on to grind up, go around the kids and cry and get up and walk away, but we'll never do it there. Amen. My old daddy laid on my arms across the street over there and died hungry. But he'll never do it again. Hallelujah. No, sir. No more hunger. They'll hunger no more. Neither will a thirst. Neither will a sunlight on them. For the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them. And shall lead them into living towns of water. And God shall wipe all tears from their eyes. Amen. They might have to do a little crying carrying on. For the Holy Ghost comes, and God will wipe all tears from your eyes. Amen. Watch. He saw four angels standing on the four corners, holding the four winds. Quickly now. My time's up. But let me get this point to you before closing. Look. He saw the four angels. You've seen the closing of the Jewish church. I saw them come the same ones, coming to these slaughter and weapons that army. Now watch. What kind of a mark did the... Holy Ghost Church received for a mark in their forehead. It was a spiritual sign. The Holy Ghost marked them. Is that right? Yeah. He never tattooed nothing on their head, did he? No. They wasn't condemned by some anti-religious country. They were condemned by their own. Yeah. See what I mean? The real church of the living God will be condemned by Catholic and Protestant because they'll unite together. They're already together as one, as mother and daughter. But these share wasn't. Then, watch what he said. He said, put a mark on their forehead. What type of mark was it? I'll read it to you. Acts 2. They were all with one accord and one place. And suddenly there came a sound, the angel, coming from heaven. You say the angel was a sound? What was it went before David when he heard the rushing of the wheat mulberry leaves that night when he waited to hear it go forth? I heard a sound from heaven, like a rushing mighty wind, God going before him. And suddenly there appeared in them holy ghost and power. Out to the street they went leaping and jumping and speaking in tongues and hammering of lips and shouting and acting like a brother. Everybody just rejoicing and praising the Lord God. Isn't that right? That's the way God does when he sends his power down to the baptism of 
of the Holy Ghost hit moved in like that, and away went the message. Amen. Hallelujah. And they shouted and screamed and spoke in tongues Amen. and went out there, and that was the mark that God put up on the people. Is that right? Amen. God put the mark. And that's the kind of a mark God is going to put on his people today. The same seal of God that went on them then under the baptism of the Holy Ghost was the seal of God. Amen. I want to ask you something, sir. The Bible says that the mark of God in that day was the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The seal that was on the people to make them different from the others was the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The New Testament says in Ephesians 4 30 that the Holy Ghost is the seal of God for the people in the last days until your eternal destination. Amen. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Then the Holy Ghost was right. Now, we had the Methodist age, we had the Baptist age, we had justification, we had sanctification, we had all these things come along. And right about 40 years ago, the baptism of the Holy Ghost was first known in the United States. Amen. Is that right? About 40 years ago, when people began to receive, how did you to call the second definite work of grace, sanctification? Amen. Sanctification is right. A vessel must first be tucked up, picked up, it's all full of mud, it's justified because the, a man is picked it up. The next thing is got to be cleaned and scoured out. The word sanctify means clean and set aside for service. But set aside for service don't mean you're in service. Amen. And then... Jesus said, Blessed are ye when you hunger and thirst for righteousness, for you shall be filled. Amen. See, the Holy Ghost came on the sanctified, real, true, sanctified believers. Amen. And signs and wonders begin to manifest themselves as soon as that sanctified vessel got right and the Holy Ghost got into it. Amen. See what I mean? You can't bring oil out of that bottle unless there's oil in there, no matter how clean the bottle is. If you can't bring speaking in tongues and divine healing and powers of God out of something that there's nothing in. Amen. The Holy Ghost had to be brought down. Look, about 40 years ago, let's think back. We look around. Watch close. There was a great rumor went forth. World War. One. First time in all the world's history. A world war. Where was he starting for? Watch straight into Germany. What happened? Strange, no one knows to this day how it stopped. Nobody knows. Read the decline of the world war. Every volume, I've read it. There's not one person who thinks it over an order come forth. Surrender, no one knows who give it. Why? Oh, God. You're going to call me holy roller anyhow. So I might as well ask my feelings. Let's. How thankful I am for the Holy Spirit to be as a platform to reveal. Amen. Notice. What? They went forth, everyone coming to the world, slaughtering weapons, to utterly slay everything in the world's war. But all of a sudden, it stopped. Yeah. Revelation, the seventh chapter, said, I saw the four angels coming down with the slaughtering weapons, and there Amen. was a man coming from the east, having a seal of living God, that hold. Amen. The four winds. Hold it. Why? The Jews ain't in the right place yet. Oh. Right. Oh, the Jews ain't in the right place. That's God's charter. He told them where they would be standing on it. He said, when you see the fig tree cutting for branches, know the time is on. And when you see the Jews returning to Palestine, know the time is on. This generation will not pass out till all things be fulfilled. Oh. And brother, in the last seven years is the first time that the Jewish flag has ever floated. Two thousand years over Jerusalem. Amen. Yes, twenty-five hundred years. Yeah. Amen. The Jews were yeah. tonight. They said, "Hold, hold, why? Why hold? Why?" Why? 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 They were some Gentiles yet between the age of Wesley and the age of Pentecost had to come in before Pentecost went into latency in church age. There was an open door set before the church. Yeah, amen. Open door to whosoever will let him come and break oh, the town of the Lord. Open door set. Hallelujah. Oh my. And he said, hold it. Why? Jesus said a man went out and he worked. And another man went out another hour and he worked. Another man went out and worked. And one man went out to live a hour. And when he stopped at the 11th hour, he gave every one of them the 
same potion. Yeah. The eleventh hour. They were why? Why did he got the eleventh hour? Everyone coming in. Martin Luther's that worked, walked under Luther's dispensation died in grace. Yeah. There were little mothers shot in Methodists that died under Wesley's age died in grace. Yeah. We're living in another age, not back there, here. Yeah. Mother used to go to the Oscars, we go to model uh, V8 Ford, almost get propelled. That's right, we're living in a different age altogether. And we're living in a different dispensation. We're living in the day of the restoration of the powers of God. Yeah, the yeah, light yeah, 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 to the power yeah, 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 Like it did in the yeah, beginning, yeah. we're living in another age. Thank you, Don't look back there to Wesley Methodist and all those yeah, back yeah, yeah, yeah. Look there to Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He also yeah, yeah, yeah. in the faith of the Bible. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Now, watch him. So hold it until what? So where the our people could come in. Yes. The last calling of the Gentiles. Oh. Mother worked there, oh. dad and them worked there, grandmother worked back there. This is our age, the eleventh hour. That world war stopped on the eleventh month in the year, the eleventh day of the month, the eleventh hour in the day, and the eleventh minute in the hour. Hey. That the eleventh hour people might come in what? Receive the same baptism of the Holy Ghost. As they did back here in the beginning to bring out the power oh, yeah. and the resurrection of the Holy Spirit. Seems times and wonders. What is it? The wars are struggling here, struggling there, struggling here, struggling there, trying to atomic bombs and everything else are being built up, but they can't do it. Hallelujah. They can't do it. Until the Jews get the visitation of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, Jesus said, Oh, so we seal the servant, not the bride. The Gentiles never was a servant. We're sons and daughters. That's the servant to do. Abraham was God's servant. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh. Now, thousands times, thousands times, thousands Amen. of Jews. God hardened Pharaoh's heart to drive him to Palestine. God hardened Hitler's heart, Mussolini's heart, Stalin's heart. He's driving by force into Palestine, not knowing what he's doing. He's working straight in the hands of God. Well, 144,000 will stand out of it. And one of these days, some divine, holy, anointed prophet of God will go there with signs and wonders. Those Jews will say, that's what I'm looking for. Without the seal of God, which is the baptism of the Holy Ghost, confederation of apostasy is the mark of the beast. That's thus saith the law. Oh, hallelujah. See what I mean? Hallelujah. But these religious teachers are trying to put on communism. When they don't realize it's working right in their own midst. He said there'll be blind leaders of the blind. Yes. Oh, 
He said, you have eyes you can't see. He said, you do in your tradition teach the doctrine of man make commandments of man making the commandments of God a non-effect. You will ask that the Catholics were setting up their catechism and your men go right here to some conference or something and decide whether they can receive divine healing or the baptism of the Spirit and these things and they condemn it and turn it down and you laugh at the Catholic, you ain't got no right to laugh at the Catholic. Amen. Because if she was a whore, the Bible said you were a harlot in the same confederation. Come on, come on, get my people. Amen. He separated, saith God. Amen. And I will receive you to myself. Thank you. That's right. Oh, why can't this Branham tabernacle come out of the wrinkle? Amen. I want to know if you people around here believe this gospel and it's been preached and you've seen it signs and wonders and confirmed and everything Amen. the Lord has spoke has come to pass. Then what's the matter around here? Well, I hear there's contentions among you. Amen. Well, I hear there's strife. I want you to write out what's the matter. I want to know what's in your heart and lay it on this platform for us tomorrow night. I want to see why this church can't be carried away with the power of God and the baptism of the Holy Ghost with signs and wonders. Amen. What's the matter? Your pastor believes it. Amen. You believe it, so what's Amen. wrong here? There's something wrong. This should be the lighthouse of the world. This should be a place where the powers of God and weeping and crying and seeking for God are to be going on day and night. Thank you, Father. Why can't we have it? I will, but you will not, said Jesus. You will not. Come and buy me. I know you say, he said, you are rich, have need of nothing, talking to the churches. said, you say, I'm rich and I have need of nothing. We're a great organization. And you don't know that you are wretched, poor, miserable, blind, and naked, and don't know it. Amen. If a man's in that six and knows it, he'll help himself. But when you're that way and don't know it, and Christ said that the churches in this day would be that way and wouldn't know it. Amen. Pinch your spiritual being, my dear, dear brother. Yeah. Pinch your soul as it was with prayer and say, Lord Jesus, check up on me. Let me take inventory tonight before I go to bed and find out what's the matter with me. Amen. I've been professing for years and I don't see these things that Jesus said that he would be with me these things to go on. I don't see it. What's the matter, Lord Jesus? Be honest. Be sincere. Amen. Come down and talk to him face to face with a brother. He'll reveal you. Amen. He'll tell you. Tear your soul apart and lay it out and say, Lord Jesus, if it cost me my family, if it cost me my life, if it cost my job, if it cost my membership, if it cost my prestige in the city, I'll Amen. take the way with the Lord just by you. Hallelujah. I remember Jesus said, straight is the gate and narrow is the way, and but few there will be that will find it, Amen. for broad is the way that leads to destruction, a million more than fifty-four. Broad is the gate that leads to destruction, and many there be a going there at. That's right. He that will lose his life for my sake shall find it. He that loves father, mother, sister, brother, anything better than me is not worthy to be called mine. Who will put his hand on the plow and start forward, even turn to look back, not worthy of the time. Brother, one of these days the last Holy Ghost anointed gospel sermon will be preached. One of these days, the last gun will fire. One of these days, the last song will be sung. One of these days, the last prayer will be prayed. One of these days, the doors of the tabernacle will be closed for the last time. The Bible will be closed on the pulpit. And you'll stand in the presence of God to give an account for what you've heard tonight. Amen. What then? What then? When the great book is open. What then? When the night comes on record, what then? Oh, as the song says, what then? When the great book is open, what then? When the ones that rejected the Savior today will be asked to give a reason, what then? Your job stood in your way. Your parents stood in your way. Your boyfriend stood in your way. Your girlfriend stood in the way. Your church stood in the way. What then? For then, when the great book is open, for then, when the one that's rejecting this message tonight, you're going to ask to give.
give a reason. What then? What are you going to do about it? You know what the mark of the beast is? Yes, you know what the seal of the God is? It's up to you. May the Lord bless you while we stand. Thine heavenly Father, let thy mercies and blessings be upon the people. Let thy spirit move, and let thy Holy Ghost shall die upon this people and give to them, Lord, the baptism of the Spirit. May every man and woman and boy and girl in here, may they be so carried away tonight by the Holy Spirit that they'll say, God, take all I got, take everything that I am, but let me serve you, my Lord. I'll lay aside everything. I'll give up self. I'll give up pride. I'll give up church. I'll give up everything. Not that they have to come out of the church, Lord, but they have to come out of the condition that they're living in. Oh, God, send Methodists back to their church on fire to preach the gospel. Send Baptists back. Send Camelites back. Send uh, Catholics back. Lord, God, send someone out of the grand tabernacle here. Back to the tabernacle here with a meek, humble spirit. That will go forth and speak and love and try to get the people in one accord again so the Holy Spirit can come in and use the people. Send great signs and wonders. I'm not every believer. Forgive every sin. Oh, God, we see the signs appearing. We see the fig tree cutting forth its bud. We know that the time is here. We see that bomb laying out in the hands of the very man that you said was given to destroy the world. Oh, God, how can we reject any longer? How can we, when you hear your blessed gospel ring out so clearly, clearly hear the Holy Spirit move, see the Holy Spirit give signs and wonders, heal the sick, open the blind eyes, restore lives to the dead. Great wonders and signs, the gospel being preached by illiterate, ignorant people, preached under the power and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Signs and wonders, the fallen of church. How much more? You said if you'd have known Moses, you would have known my day. Hallelujah. So is it today, Lord. They see all kinds of signs of wars and troubles and everything. Let them turn back the pages of the dear old Bible and see where the milepost is. We're at the end of the age. Oh, God, move your spirit upon these people. And as they move from here tonight, may the Holy Ghost move with them. And tomorrow night, Lord, when we come down to this great altar call that we're fixing to give, we pray that the altars will be brought full, the prayer rooms will be full, and may Sunday morning, Lord, and Sunday night, we be baptizing the people here according to the Word of God, and may the Holy Ghost be falling upon that water and doing great signs and wonders. Grant it, Father. Bless our dear pastor here. Bless the members. Bless the strangers in our gates. May we go home tonight and ponder these things in our hearts. Return back tomorrow night rejoicing, bringing with a cheese. We ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, bless each one of you. Shake one another's hands. Come back tomorrow night. Bring in your request and what you want and lay it on the pulpit. May God ever anoint you with you. Amen. God bless you.